Hello everyone, on today's video I thought we'd explore a little bit more of our re-entry here and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at taking a Mercury mission off of the Jupiter ICBM. Now the neat thing here, and it's unfortunate, I love the little stoplight by the way, is the fact that you can't see just how not big this thing is. I mean, you're looking at it going, well, it's got to be pretty tall. I mean, at the little booster centers up here, you're kind of hanging off the side of it. It's really not that big. And again, we're comparing these things to like Apollo or the space shuttle. So let's go ahead and pop inside. So our t scenario today actually has us at one hour and 30 minutes before takeoff. At this point, nothing on the aircraft has been powered up. So we're actually going to cold and dark an entire spaceship which is absolutely wild if you think about it for a little bit. Could you imagine if we miss one thing? All right, let's go ahead and do it to it. So checklist, interior inspection. So we're gonna go ahead and just run through it real quick. We go behind us and there's actually a bunch of battery controls. Very difficult to see from where you normally sit. There's a left-hand battery. You wanna make sure that one's turned on. Then you're gonna be asked to turn this one on. You're gonna turn this one on. They're gonna ask you to go ahead and make sure the standby two battery is on. And you're gonna make sure that switch behind you is turned on. Next though, we're gonna go over here and take a look at our handy dandy phase shifter. And we're just gonna make our way right across. Again, these are all circuit breakers. Uh, notice that we actually, actually fuses, I should be more specific. And you'll notice that we actually have two settings for each one. We have the on off, but our on actually has two different directions, which is kind of convenient. All right, let's go flip over here. It makes me feel like I'm starting up the Millennium Falcon here. Of course, all you have to do is press the green button and you're good to go. <clears throat> all right, flip over on this side. We're gonna make sure this is in the arm position. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure this is to the right. We're gonna turn our photo lights on. We're gonna flip our cabin lights on. Ah, oh, I can actually see what I'm doing now. Sweet. All right, we're gonna go pop down here. This is gonna go ahead and set that control up. Fire retro switch. So we wanna make sure that's all set. I'm just taking a look at it real quickly. It is in a good position. Again, that's these guys up here. Looks good. Looks good. All right. And we're going to go ahead and head to this stage. Uh, we're going to make sure auto fuel is at 100%. And that's going to be this gauge right here. You can see I'm at 100. We got 100% of that. Uh, desate rate, uh, zero. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to make sure our altimeter is at zero. Checked. Now we're going to confirm that our satellite clock is accurate. Uh, sure. Uh, time to launch should be set to zero. That is time from launch should be set to zero. Verify time to retrograde should be four hours. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to make sure our A rate indicators look good. Yep, looks good. We're going to make sure attitude indicators are correct. They look pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to make sure the timer zero cover has been removed. It looks good. Cabin pressure, I uh, expect it to be atmosphere, which it is. We're going to confirm that our air temperature is, oh my God, <whistles> that's warm. Uh, suit environment indicators. We just want to make sure this looks okay. I'm dying in this suit just a little bit. We're going to make sure we have plenty of oxygen, which we have plenty in the primary and secondary. It's going to be a pretty long right to mission today. We're going to slap the cabin fan to the on position. We're now going to go ahead and double check this, that our voltage and everything agrees. In this case, it looks fine to me. Uh, let's go take a look at DC amps. It should be at zero. It's at zero because we're not running on our own power. AC bus, we're going to slick this to the right. We're going to go ahead and set the standby battery on. Isolation, and we should show about 30 volts, which looks okay. Uh, 115, yeah, I'm not complaining. All right, let's go ahead and set this to the middle position. Again, imagine doing this in the real world without having that button. Go ahead and click that on. We're actually going to go set all these up. Now, these switches actually turn on these alarms, so it's a switch for a switch kind of a thing. So we're just going to confirm all switches look good. Delightful. All right, let's go ahead and set my inverter temperature. We're going to set it to position two. We're actually going to set everything to condition two. And we're going to go ahead and click on the maneuver switch and set this to the on position. So that's all you have to do to basically get this thing ready to a go. We don't have to do anything for a little while now, but thankfully there's time acceleration. <clears throat> so normally what you do is at 40 minutes, we're going to test abort capability. So let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. Do, 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 do. I should be whistling that because copyright. And again, we're going to wait until this is about 40 minutes. Close enough. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the abort capability. So I'm going to run the switch next. Go ahead and get that out of my way so I don't have to see. We're going to flip this over to the right. This is my ammeter. We're going to arm the squib left. Click. And we're going to confirm that our DC selector is on mode 6. Checked. And now we go ahead and call them up and say, could you make sure I can abort okay? And the fun thing is when you actually do this, you get all sorts of angry lights. It's kind of fun. Well, let's see here. Request abort capability test. So you're going to switch to onboard power. And you're going to get a complete little test. The light will come on. Everything will go. Your bus voltage is going to shift. Everything's going to go nuts. And if that all worked, uh, they call you back and say, it looks like your board capability is looking pretty good. So in this case, uh, we're looking pretty good. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my abbreviated interior check. We don't do this until we get to 20 minutes before it takes off. Again, our launch is in like 40 minutes. Now, the interesting thing is you think about how much time you need to do international flights. I'm getting ready for space travel here, and I barely haven't even done anything. All right, 20 minutes. Looks good. Let's go ahead and begin our abbreviated interior check. 
So first things first, we're going to make sure retro delay is all like that. Fuel, we already checked those earlier. They look good, look good. Cabin pressure, nope, 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 nope. Suit fan. It's already set to right. We're going to go ahead and set this to position zero, which is the main bus. We're going to turn our beacon on, and now we are ready to go. So that was our abbreviated kind of last minute checks just to make sure everything looks pretty good. Uh, when we get down to T minus 10, we're going to flip over to internal power. Close enough. All right. Switching to full internal power. Running check. All right, we're gonna ask them nicely to switch over to our own onboard power batteries. Now, when we do this, you have to remember that when you do this, this should show power draining from your batteries. Otherwise, you're gonna have big problems here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call them up. I'm gonna say, hey, we'd like to switch over to internal power, please. See how it spiked? That means we're actually drawing power and the lights didn't go out, which makes me feel a little bit better. All right, we're gonna flip the isolation battery to normal. We're gonna set the standby battery off. We're now completely on our own batteries at this particular point. Nice thing is the cabin temperature has dropped and my suit and temperature has come down quite a bit as well. So I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable than I was a little bit earlier, for sure. Okay, so our next list is going to be when we get down to T minus 10, which is final checks. Okay, this activates launching. If you don't click that switch, you're not going anywhere. Scrolling down here, this is the transmitter. We're gonna go flip this over to the UHF position. We're usually gonna go ahead and do a test real quick. I'm just gonna call them up and say, hey, are you there? Five by five is actually a very interesting little possibility here. Something I actually had to look up. This actually refers to five different categories at level five of transmission quality. This is actually a very complicated calculation, but they just said five by five and psh, we're done. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to my time zero. I've already checked it, it's at zero, cover is removed. DC selector, we're gonna switch it to the number one bus. We shouldn't be running much. And we are now ready for takeoff. That's all you had to do. Ah, so if you too found yourself at the wheel of the Mercury spacecraft, uh, you would now be ready to go. And you can see again, we're a Jupiter version, which is a pretty wild flight. That should be kind of fun for us. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and double check, make sure everything is perfect because we don't have any mistakes. <laughs> that could be bad. During ascent, basically we keep an eye on everything. Uh, one thing we do wanna do is after the tower does jettison, we shut these two switches off, it's pretty easy. Um, booster engine cut off. This is actually kind of interesting. We have a set of booster and we have a main engine, which is uh, absolutely wild the way they configured this one. Basically, all this says is after the little tower in the front, that's that little nose up there, pops off on us, we're ready to roll. Uh, when the booster engine cuts off, that's that one. Now, when our Seco, you just got to make sure the separation cap is green. Because remember, we have to separate from the thing that gets us into space. Okay, uh, once we do get into orbit, we're just going to make sure everything looks okay. Again, we're just getting ready for basically approach at the particular point. Scrolling down here, we've got some emergency procedures. <laughs> um, so I've had some emergencies in this and just kind of practicing this particular spacecraft. And I can tell you that you can't get to the checklist in time. you got to figure it out on your own. We have a couple of different flight modes. We'll experiment with these when we get to space. So we have some uh, quick little systems here. So if we run into a situation where we haven't done anything, we can do that. Uh, they have a neat little thing here, which kind of lets you walk through everything here. You can actually test stuff. It's actually kind of cool. And of course, we have our re-entry things. But again, we're only worrying about ascent at this particular point. All right, let's fast forward time. All right, we're going to be going in uh, one minute. All right, 16 seconds. All right, watch this. Now, remember, this thing is fueled the old, I don't want to call it the old-fashioned way. This is fueled with a tremendously dangerous fuel. Let's let them talk. Yeah, that's sweet. Now notice three separate engines. There's a little rotation so we don't bang into the tower. Oh boy, I'm glad I'm not underneath that. That looks unpleasant. See the little bur these little burners here to keep us nice and straight? Old school. All right, going up. <laughs> Now, this is about a seven and a half minute climb if you're in the space shuttle. Since we're on the front of an ICBM at the moment, uh, this is a little bit quicker for us than usual, only on account of the fact that uh, we've got a lot of thrust. So presently, we're pushing here at about, mm, I'm gonna say about a solid gravity and a half. It's really not too bad. Yeah, I can barely read that. Yeah, about a G and a half. Just kind of keep that in mind as things start getting interesting. So I think it's interesting that I'm going through clouds, but the clouds are over there. So I'm, I guess I'm not making any judgments here. All right. Oh, getting bounced around pretty good here. We have four hours to retrograde. Uh, we're definitely going to make sure we're in the retro position when that happens. Otherwise, I think you can imagine what's going to happen to us. We're going to get stuck. All right. Notice we're starting our roll program. I mean, not a roll program, our pitch program. So now the spacecraft is going to start rolling backwards like this. 
giving us that extra bit of thrust that we need to be directing in the uh, basically, per what do you want to call it? parallel direction to Earth's surface in order to build up orbital speed. Yep, see it? So we're tipping it about, uh, that was about 60 degrees or so now, tilted over. It's going to start getting really dark. Yeah, that's space. We are currently at 3Gs, which is, eh, it's not comfortable. Let me just put it to you that way. Look over here. Ah, stick my face out the window. Whoops, apparently I'm out of bounds. Can't do that. Hey, how you doing? Oh. All right, getting bounced around, getting bounced around. Let's go ahead and take a look at my checklist for ascent. Uh, monitor board, do, 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 do. Cabin pressure should be dropping, confirmed. Uh, we don't touch that until the tower has been jettisoned. If you don't let the tower come off first, uh, you can imagine the consequence. Of course, if you're in a hurry, you can just pull this ring right now, but that means you can't abort. The abort switch, by the way, is into your left hand in case of emergencies. All right, BECO, that is a booster engine cut off. Delightful. So when, whenever this light comes on, you have 20 seconds to something happens. In this case, that tower is going to and basically fly away with a really loud noise. We've just set BECO. I'm not going to touch anything, of course, until this is green. So don't. There it goes. Delightful. So now we're going to come over here. And we're going to disable that. And we're going to go ahead and make sure retro jettison is set to false. Yeah, we're just shutting off the circuit breaker. We don't need it. And of course, we want to make sure the emergency version is also set off. And that's it. Booster engine cut off. So now we are on, we got to build up speed mode. Now we're actually down to one engine. If you remember, we took off with three. We just had the little one right there doing all the work. Oh boy, getting bounced around. Now, interesting thing here is I'm actually pitching towards the earth. Uh, this might seem kind of unintuitive to folks who have uh, never seen that before. They usually think you just kind of go straight. Again, your Kerbal Space Program kind of folks. But the reality is you've got to build up that horizontal speed. I've got enough vertical speed as it is. I don't need any. I just need to go that way. So in order to compensate for kind of the gentle arc you're getting, again, I'm trying to use my imagination here, you're basically going like this to pick up that speed and almost having gravity help unload the spacecraft to get even more vertical speed here. Or um, I should say horizontal speed. It should be more specific. Now we for G-forces, so we're about three Gs. I can tell you we're about to burn out in a second. Oh boy, notice there's no speedometer. <laughs> what would you be measuring as a speed? Nice. Yeah, let's get out the window real quick. I'm looking pretty good, whoa. Apparently I fell out of the spacecraft. I like how if you fly completely from this perspective, yeah, it's about as good as you can see here. What a lovely day in the, uh, let's see, this middle Atlantic basically. All right, what are we up to? We're up to uh, three and a quarter. We're starting to get close to the running out of fuel here. The interesting thing about spacecraft is the more fuel you burn, the faster you accelerate. Yay! <laughs> it's not necessarily a good thing. What happens if I shut off launch control? I wouldn't touch that. Fun thing too, if uh, you ever get a fire in the cabin in space, it's a really easy problem to solve. You simply come down here and you pull this little handle that sucks all the atmosphere out of the actual spacecraft. I just like how there's a little memory message here that says, you know, make sure you close your little visor before you do that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some systems. Cabin pressure is actually holding perfectly. It's in the green. It's a little warm in here, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. My suit is still very hot, but I'm not going to crank on that too much because the moment this thing starts slowing down, uh, we're going to have to start worrying about that other stuff. All right, looking good, looking good. Rico. And we are free. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and do our post Seco. Run my little checklist here. Everything is confirmed. Let's go back to Seco. Second engine cutoff. Uh, we're going to make sure that cap is green. It is. And now we do our orbit procedures. Let's go ahead and get it ready. All right, so we're gonna make sure the emergency retro sequence is disabled, the emergency drogue chute is disabled, and we're gonna make sure our manual retro is disabled for now. And now we have done it, folks. We are in space. We made it. Let's stick my head out the window here. We should be getting a nice little view. All right, now right now the computer is actually in control of which direction, which attitude the spacecraft will fly at. Now what makes this interesting is if you don't touch anything, it'll actually automatically point itself retrograde like this, and it'll actually put it at a little bit of an angle, kind of like that. Now the scary thing is that is literally the booster that carried us. You know, if I start jamming on the gas here, I'm going to go flying right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of get out of the way. 
So unfortunately for this particular spacecraft, we did not have a translation option. We only have rotation. So as we kind of accelerate, decelerate, we're slowly going to pull away from him and not have to worry about it. But again, if I did something dumb and want to give it like full thrust right now, I'd smack right into it. It would end pretty badly for us. Okay, so uh, now we are in orbit. We have three hours and 53 minutes before we need to start thinking about descending. Obviously, I'm going to accelerate time. Don't panic. But it's time to play with the spacecraft. I mean, this thing's pretty fun, pretty expensive. So let's try out the different control modes, shall we? All right, let's try fly-by-wire mode. Okie doke, let's set it up. First things first, we're going to set to fly-by-wire, and that's it. We're good to go. Let's try it out. All right, I'm going to give it a nice, nice gentle nudge. Pull up a little bit. Now, notice in fly-by-wire mode, there's no damping. You know, if I push the control all the way like that, it's going to start moving like that immediately. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Unfortunately, since I don't have myself a joystick for this purpose, I don't have the ability to get really, really fine tuning here. All right, let's try a little bit of yaw here. Okay, that's pretty quick. Uh, you can see that I have a little mark here that tells me exactly how aggressive my yaw is being. I can probably crank on it and get this thing really going. Oh my god, yes you can. <laughs> this is so dangerous. You never want to design a spacecraft that you can basically over control and not get back in control. Remember, as you burn fuel, you get lighter. Your controls get more sensitive. Whee! Okay, that's a little uncomfortable. All right, I'm noticing a slight roll effect you get when you use the yaw functionality here. It kind of doesn't surprise me. All right, I'm going to slow down a little bit. We'll come back to our original point of reference, which is pointing at our main little body there, the Jupiter rocket. I'll go ahead and try a roll now. Prepare to get dizzy. Actually, that roll is pretty good. Oh, man, can you imagine this? Anything you have loose in your pockets is going to start floating around pretty much right away. Oh yeah, you could definitely get disoriented. I've tried this one out in VR, and it, it's pretty its pretty amazing. It's just about as cool as it looks like from you folks at home when we're watching it. All right, everything looked good, looked good. We're going to go finish up our roll real quick. All right, we're going to try to cancel the roll out by hand, which I guarantee is going to be a lot harder than I make it. All right. All right, we're starting to get some uh, static on the radio. Nothing too new there. Okay, let's try out the different modes. So that's fly-by-wire. That's pretty cool. Let's switch to manual mode. Uh, nobody likes manual mode. So I'm going to pull this handle out, switch this to rate com. Make sure I have everything good. Good. Okay. So manual mode is a little different, whereas this mode uses basically a computer to kind of control things. This is literally, I'm pulling the handle that opens the valve. So you can see it's, uh, ooh, no damping with this. And it's actually about the same. I don't think it's too, too bad. Go ahead and line myself up again. Okay, it's feeling pretty good. Let's get this thing into a death roll here. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm sure if uh, this was Gus Gunderson taking the spiral here, he would not be thrilled. Slow that down a little bit. Could be Adrian Shepard, too. I don't know which one it is. And just a little bit more rotation. And we're just about... I like the fact that you get a rate indication. That's actually really convenient. I wish other spacecraft had that. You know, from other games, too. All right, cool. I like that mode. I kind of like the regular one. Now a rate command. Rate command is my favorite. This is like the easy one. So the way this works is I jam on the controls. And if I let go, see how it slows me down automatically? So I'm going to pull back all the way like this. Let go. See how it has its own compensating force? So if I push down, let's say this much, do you see how it fights me? So this mode actually has a built-in system that prevents you from exceeding a certain speed as you rotate. Nudge that down just a little bit. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go bring that back to center. Delightful. All right, let's go switch that back to regular mode. So we're going to slap in that handle, switch it over to auto, switch it on to normal mode. So now the spacecraft should reorient itself, as you can see, automatically, so that we're facing the direction we need to be facing. Kind of an interesting thing here is uh, we got this handy dandy little telescope. And if you're wondering how I'm able to get this information without a gyro, it's because it has a radiation sensor that can actually feel the edge of the planet here. It looks like we've got some lightning going on. Cool. All right, looking pretty good. Uh, three hours, 49 minutes. Everything looks fine. Our gyro is already pretty well aligned. If something went really, really bad, we could uh, reset our gyros here. I haven't had to do that right. I'm not going to touch this one from before, but I am going to start thinking about re-entry. Notice 30 minutes before entry time, we have to freeze everything on board this particular spacecraft. It's the only way to safely do everything. So let's go ahead and fast forward to time to re-entry. Boop, 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 boop. Dun, dun, dun. Got about three hours to re-entry. Man, I wish you could do this when you're waiting in line at the DMV. This would be great. Watching the planet zip by. Got a minute and a, a minute and a half. Well, it will be if I don't press the button fast enough. 
Remember, looking for 30 minutes before re-entry to start doing our re-entry checklist here. It's 41, 39, doop. Notice the spacecraft did not run its engines when I was not facing that direction. That was a good thing on our part. Oh boy, that could be disorienting. All right, canceling out that rotation is going to put us in the correct position. I think it overcompensated just a teeny tiny bit, but that happens sometimes. All right, good. So let's go ahead and do our re pre reentry check. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to make sure everything is set so that we can actually utilize it. Turn on this one, turn on this one. We're going to scoot over here. We're going to turn on this one. Normally, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cool down the aircraft, the aircraft, spacecraft. So we're actually going to click everything down a little bit to kind of start cooling us off. So my re-entry, pre-entry, yeah, pre-entry, my pre-entry is in good shape here. I'm just going to confirm everything looks okay. You can see the whole spacecraft is starting to get itself kind of ready as well. All right, so I'm going to enter the retro phase, pre I should say, not re-entry, it's retro. And we're going to get ready for this. It's going to happen in about 30 minutes. You're going to get all sorts of warning lights. The thing is now going to orient itself. One thing I just want to visually confirm to make sure everything's okay is that the retro delay is set to norm. That could be bad if it is not. The other thing, you want to make sure the attitude of the spacecraft is set to retro as well. You don't want this thing accidentally retroing you out of control. So you can see right now our spacecraft is it's looking pretty much in the direction we want to be as far as our re-entry goes. I'm not too concerned about the rest of it. I'll speed up time a little bit here. Going over the Horn of Africa. 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Notice you got a little light that pops on that says, hey, by the way, we're about to do a re-entry. Are you ready? Of course, it's not truly a re-entry. Again, it's retro-firing. And now retro-firing, as you can see, there's not much to see when you're in this side of the planet, but that's all right. Basically, we have a little booster pack of three little teeny tiny motors that are going to help slow us down here. All right. Notice, by the way, we can't see a thing. It's not like we've got night vision. Well, let's use the filter. It doesn't do much for you. You can actually put this away if you want. If you click on the man button right here, there's a little switch. And then right on the side, there's a little handle. Boop! And you can go ahead and pull it and put it away if you don't want to play with it. Again, you want to make sure that's retracted before you re-enter. Otherwise, it'll snap off. It could end pretty poorly for you. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and let this thing guide for a minute. And we are lights on, retro attitude. Okay. We're now at the correct angle. Ready? Hold on to your hats. Yeah, it's not that exciting. I'm sorry. <laughs> there it is. You can see these little teeny tiny little rockets that basically boost in a very, very distinctive sequence. So you get that one, you're going to get that one, you're going to get that one, and then this one in the front is going to finally zip out. And that's going to be exactly as much as we're going to need to slow the spacecraft down and let us do a nice and safe re-entry, which is really not too bad if you think about it. That's it. Now, now we got to get rid of it, but I'm going to let everything kind of go on. So we have just done our retro firing. Retro looked perfect. We're going to make sure retro at. We're going to make sure retro. OK, everything's good. So now we're going to do re-entry. OK. I'm going to press the run button. We're going to make sure this is in the arm position. We're going to make sure that this is in the arm position. We're going to come down here. We're going to make sure this is in the re-entry position. If you do not do that, it's uh, not going to end well for you. Because of uh, the aircraft, or, see, eh, force to have it. The spacecraft will not be at the correct attitude to actually successfully land ourselves. All right, that's good. Even though it's giving me a little warning here, it is not at the correct attitude anymore because we're now in a re-entry attitude instead. And we just jettison our retro pack. Go ahead and get this out of the way real quick so you can see. Ow. It, it's there, trust me. It's this little thing that's floating away with a bunch of wires hanging off of it. All right, looking down. Everything's looking good. Uh, just doing one last run through everything. Again, re-entry. We don't want to goof any of this up. Run the checklist for the 50th time. Everything's ready. So we've jettisoned our retro. We are in the correct attitude for landing. Our current altitude, we don't show an altitude. We're too high up at the moment. Pitch is perfect. We're about 10 degrees. Uh, we've got a little tiny bit of roll right now, but again, it's nothing bad. If I was really scared, I'd actually sit there and start manipulating the controls myself, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to flip the switch back on, and I'm just going to confirm just kind of visually that everything makes sense the way that it does. All right, I'm going to zip through everybody. Let's see what our main bus is at. Yeah, 40 amps ain't bad. Standby buses should be off. Isolation bus we're not using, so it should be off as well. Take a look at our oxygen supply. Ugh, we got plenty. Descent rate, we're starting to descend now because we're starting to slow down. Control fuel, yikes. Look at how much fuel we use just kind of tooling around a little bit. That's uh, that's not cool. That's really not cool. 
All right, so now we're going to slowly start approaching the atmosphere. I'm going to just go down here. I don't know if we have this mode on here, which is kind of a bum. There we go. Let me see if we can get that. There we go. So now you can see what my vertical speed is. You can see my orbital speed is still pretty darn fast. Notice my perigree, which is as low as you're going to go, is uh, pretty darn low. So um, unfortunately, that's going to smack us under the ground pretty good, which is the objective. I'm going to shut all that data off. Sounds good. Let's do a quick battery check while we're at it. I'm going to get a battery check. They're going to call us back and say I'm about hmm, three quarters of my batteries. So far, there have been no failures, which is awesome because I've flown this one a few times and have had some issues with that. I'm not attitude. I want ascent. That's what I want. Boop. That way I can just kind of keep an eye on everything real quick. What's map Apogee? Okay, looks good. Speed up time a little bit here. Now watch this. Everything's going perfectly smooth. I don't have to worry about anything. My orbital speed is perfect. My vertical speed is coming up a little bit. And all of a sudden, you're going to see this little light down here suddenly pop on. That is the 0.5G. That is giving you a warning that you're beginning the deceleration process. And uh, as soon as that happens, a lot of other things will start to happen almost instantaneously on board the spacecraft. Ding! Told ya. I'm gonna let go of all my controls for a second. Now, if you look at the front windshield, you probably notice that we're starting to do this weird kind of left roll thing here. Uh, the purpose of that roll is so when we re-entry, we burn different parts of our little uh, blast shield evenly. Otherwise, we'd have other issues. Okay, we're starting to re-enter. There's a bunch of things I know that we're starting to re-enter. First of all, I'm starting to build up a G-force. Second thing is, look at my orbital velocity, and my vertical speed is starting to spike. Since my apogee came down, that's a really good sign that we're starting to re-enter. Okay, let's go ahead and check my re-enter checklist here. Do, 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 re-entry, run the checklist, perfect, got it. When this thing turns green, by the way, we should double check to make sure my roll rate is accurate, which I'm telling you right now, it looks pretty darn good. I mean, I set this aircraft, or aircraft, I did it again! I set the spacecraft up from cold and dark, so I'm not too concerned with it. Oh man, that could make you real dizzy. The best thing to do is look out front, straight out the front windshield, though, because you could see the entire Earth upside down. Ah, all right, speed up time a little bit here. Watch the G-forces. You'll notice I'm at 1.25 Gs, and I haven't done anything. Just going over my controls one more time. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Oh, man, man, did I get this today. Usually I have to do this three or four times before I get it right. There are really a lot of buttons. And then if we ever do the Gusmobile, you know, the Gemini, oh, boy. And then there's Apollo, which, honestly, I need a third or fourth person to help with that thing. That's a lot of work. Oh, my. Oh my. Oh, that's uncomfortable. What are we at? Three? Oh boy. That's four G's. Oh, I'm glad I'm taking it to the back as opposed to the front. And here comes the reentry. <laughs> oh my, we're at eight G's. This hurts. Gotta black out. It sounds like somebody's on the hall trying to bank to get in. I can't believe how low high this descent rate is. I'm glad that the cabin pressure is good, otherwise my ears would probably explode. Oh, b -b 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 boy. This is uh, some serious acceleration here. Take a look outside. I'm literally a fireball. Look at that. Oh, apparently the fireball doesn't touch you. Hence plasma. The fun thing is we haven't even gotten to the best part of re-entry, which is when you hit the uh, really, really, really thick part of the atmosphere. Then it gets so red outside, it basically looks like you're going to explode. It's quite satisfying, if you ask me. All right, touching uh, seven Gs here. Oh boy. Remember, we took off, like, not that long ago, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so you can see just how fast these missions were. Ooh, getting uh, bounced around. I'm keeping my hand on the manual control, though, because I can't tell you how many times I've had failures on this spacecraft. This thing just comes apart on you if you try to keep any real amount of orbits in. Not quite as bad. Actually, I'd say it's a little worse than Gemini. Gemini is not the most reliable. Especially with that arm board. Uh-oh, I'm starting to slide. See it? I was starting to skid a little bit. That's okay, though. Ideally, you want the nose of this thing pointing at the center of that thing. If you actually look at it from the side, you see I'm starting to skid? Uh-oh. 
And we're skidding. We're skidding. Oh boy, skidding. We can't skid. Oh my. Oh boy. Mm, this isn't good. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, that was way too close. Okay. Ho 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 ho. Alright, continue rolling. Oh, this is the best part. Oh my god, do you see how close that was? Oh, that was uh, nutty. Oh boy. Okay. NASA owes me a couple bucks after that one. I just saved your spacecraft. Of course, uh, anybody would instantly point out the fact that I just saved me. Oh, we're safe. Oh, oh boy. Okay. So, like I was warning everybody earlier, there are failures from time to time in the spacecraft. And I can't uh, encourage you enough to know how it all operates before you run into some of these problems on your own. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, okay, that wasn't so good. Let's see how we're doing out the window here. There's a ground down there somewhere, I think. All right, we are at 40,000 feet. We should be getting uh, the main chute. This is the best part. All right, we made it. We are now landing. Okay, let's start running everything. Let's confirm that this is working correctly. Let's now make sure this is set back correctly so I can go ahead and make conversations with the good folks at home. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. We're going to make sure the drag chute fires automatically. Again, we're looking at about 20,000 feet to do that. That's coming up. There it goes. Is it? Ha! Ah, uh, don't worry about that, folks. Um, that's probably something I melted. <laughs> nice. All right, looking pretty good. So the drag chute fires, and now we're going to go ahead and fire up our little handy-dandy snorkel thing. Um, if something doesn't work, you can go ahead and pull the handle for the snorkel yourself, just like that. And you can see now I've activated the snorkel. That's just going to start giving us a little bit of air. Kind of nice, especially if you take a look at my current cabin temperature. It's not exactly cool in here, but it is real. Oh, there's the main. Nice. I think we're going to live today. Yes. Hey, we made it. Now, if you're wondering what that sound is, that's the sound of the little airbag firing. Boop. I didn't need that anyway. And that's that big puffy thing underneath that's actually going to help me land this thing kind of smoothly in the water. Boy. Well, I think we made it. All right, folks, uh, hopefully this video is kind of interesting. Uh, it's basically a complete mission with uh, one of these good old-fashioned Mercury-Jupiter rockets. Um, I think it's kind of fun. This is like, I know it's like, you know, you don't have a lot of, ooh, I've got to land the plane carefully or something. But it is really, really cool to see how sophisticated the technology was for the day at the same time as just how effective it actually is. You know, I was able to complete that mission with um, not a lot of astronaut training. I'm not going to lie. It might seem like I know what I'm doing, but um, I'm not that great at this stuff. And when I do Apollo, ugh, I look pretty bad. But again, that's just something you learn over time. <laughs> that's a pretty cool little spacesuit. I can see a little camera to keep an eye on everything. I like how there's a, uh, like a little red light in here if I need to break things up. I also appreciate this little uh, kind of graduated line in here so you can kind of see things when you're lining them up. Fortunately, I was quick enough with those handles. And when we were re-entering, I guarantee you there's something on the side of the aircraft, or spacecraft, that is not there anymore. Um, I'm not sure what that would be, but I'm sure there's some handle or some decal or something that they're never going to be able to find because it got charred off. But, you know, that's what makes re-entry so exciting. Interesting thing here is it points me basically exactly where I intended to be. So I'm actually, I appreciate the system. It actually works really, really, really well. We're going to go ahead and do our splashdown, and then we're going to go ahead and call it. And you'll have seen a complete, like I said, Mercury remission, just like that from cold and dark. Got to keep an eye on things. Yeah, we're pretty darn close. Of course, you couldn't do this with your head. You're so strapped into that thing. You're not going anywhere anytime soon. I hope the destroyer is nearby because um, I don't want to be hanging out in this thing any longer than I need to. Looks good. Looks good. I can come over here and actually push this button manually. It's not going to do anything. Go away. I don't want to see this light anymore. <laughs> yeah, landing bag. I just love how simple and logical this is. Love it. I right, got my window one more time. I'm about to go splash. This thing hits a little hard when it hits the water. Not as bad as some of the later missions like Apollo. Oh, man. That thing is like whoosh when you hit the water. And you can see I'm right about to hit it. And remember, I'm lying on my back here. It's not tremendously comfortable. All right. Just a few feet to go. And we should be hitting the water. Let's hope we don't flip the other way. Because remember, one of these capsules, whoosh, hey, we did it!
Yes! <laughs> we landed! All right, folks, hopefully you found this video kind of interesting. Like I said, I find stuff like this kind of fun. You can see I'm just like chilling here in the uh, Pacific Ocean, and uh, it's kind of nice outside, so I'm not complaining about the weather. And unfortunately, there's going to be... Oh, look at this. I can still read the thing on the side. I guess I didn't hit it as hard as I thought it was. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Uh, next time, we'll go ahead and take a look at Gemini. Uh, there's going to be a little involved. I'll probably have to break that into multiple videos. Other than that, enjoy.